Hi, I'm Tony Rosshellauer, and today I'd like to give you a quick overview of an important element of open science, which is open peer review. So open peer review is an umbrella term for a number of new ways that peer review models can be adapted in line with the aims of open science uh, to bring greater transparency, inclusivity and accountability to the process. Traditional peer review is anonymous, confidential and closed only to invited reviewers. In contrast, the main aspects of open peer review are open identities, where authors and reviewers are aware of each other's identities. Open reports, where review reports are published alongside the relevant article. And open participation, where the wider community are able to contribute to the review process. These elements can be combined in lots of different ways. And variations of open peer review are already in use at journal publishers like F1000, Biomed Central, eLife, PRJ and Copernicus. Um, and other large publishers like Springer Nature and Elsevier are also actively experimenting with it. A recent survey that we conducted for the Open Air project showed that researchers are increasingly open to the idea of open peer review and it seemed to have many advantages. For example, publishing review reports with open identities makes peer review more visible so that researchers can get credit for their peer review activities. It also increases transparency and accountability so that potential conflicts of interest and bias can be better monitored. It could lead to better, more thorough and constructive reviews. Um, and published review reports are also a great training resource, for early especially for early career researchers, to see how peer review is done. And finally, open participation enables greater inclusion in the peer review process, allowing many more people to potentially contribute. There are some possible drawbacks to watch out for, though. Our survey found that researchers are often wary of open identities, worried either that early career researchers might be put at risk from more senior colleagues seeking payback for critical reviews, or that the reviewers might not be so forthright in their criticisms. There isn't actually much formal evidence to show that either of these um, are actually are the case yet. So to sum up, open peer review is moving mainstream and it has plenty of potential advantages, but there are some potential downsides too that require more research and understanding. If you would like to find out more, in addition to exploring the Foster resources, uh, here are some links to some further reading. Thanks for your time.